Hey guys, I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood colorist, and this video is a continuation from my previous video where we discussed about the process of prepping the materials from the offline editor to the colorist. And once the colorist has done with their work, this video is going to be about how the colorist is going to export the materials for the online editor. So let's get into the video. Right now, what you're seeing is a project that is completed. So the client has approved the grid and everything is graded as you can see here in my light box. So what I want to do is prep this for export and how we're going to do that is jumping into the deliver page. So in the deliver page, I'm going to go up to my render settings and select custom export. As for file name, we can just ignore it for now. And for location, you can just browse and locate where you want to export the files. So I'm going to go with render and I'm going to choose individual clips because we want each clip to render individually instead of one whole timeline. So for video, I'm of course going to check export video. If you don't do this, video won't come out. And for format, I'm going to go with the max settings for now first, which is QuickTime. As for codec, I'm going to choose Apple ProRes and Apple ProRes 422HQ. So this is the usual type of codec that I will export 422HQ if there is no further instructions from the online editor because 422HQ is 10-bit and it's good enough for most use cases. But sometimes I do get requests from the VFX team to export in Apple ProRes 4444 which is a higher bit depth which is 12-bit and there's less subsampling so there's more details to do VFX. But if you're using ProRes 4444, the files are going to be super heavy, especially if you're rendering at source resolution later. So if you're dealing with 5K or 6K footage, it's going to be super, super heavy. Hence why I find that ProRes 422HQ is good enough for most use cases. So the next thing that we're going to do is to render at source resolution. So we want to maintain the resolution of the files without having to downsize it to maybe 4, 6K to 4K or 4K to 1080. We want to export at the same size. So when the XML connects back later on, we won't lose any resolution from zooming into the clips. So and then I'm going to select use constant bit rate. And for advanced setting, I'm going to set this to auto. As for color space tag and gamma tag, I'm going to just set it to same as project. But if you see in my project settings, color management, I have it set to timeline color space, Da Vinci white gamut intermediate and output color space Rex 9 a So this is for Mac. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is make sure force sizing to highest quality is turned on and also force debayer to highest quality. So this is to ensure that the clips will be exported without any loss in quality. And for enable flat pass, we just leave it off. And we also have to check for disable sizing and blanking output so that it removes all the zooms and the crops and you're left with the source sizing of the footage. And lastly, I'm also going to add frame handles and usually I will go for 25 frame handles because 25 frames is one second here in a PAL country. If you are NTSC, maybe you're going to choose 24 frame handles. But these frame handles means that in every clip, I will add additional 25 frames. That means one second in front and one second at the back in case the online editors want to add in transitions effect which uses a little bit of the back or the front of the clip. So one thing to take note about this part is because we are exporting extra frame handles, when color grading, we also have to go up to view and show current clip with handles and then track for the frame handles as well. So if you don't track for the frame handles, then the tracking might run off when you export extra frame handles. So not to forget all the Windows users out there, you might not have Apple ProRes. So what you can choose is actually DNX HR, which is high quality. So we can choose DNX HR and you can also go down to DNX HR HQ, which is sort of the Windows equivalent of ProRes 422 HQ. And all the other settings are basically the same. So these are the settings for video. As for audio, usually I will just turn it off because we don't need audio as a colorist. And as for file, we are going to use source name so that the XML can link back the files together. If you use a custom name, then the files might have a hard time to link back to your XML later on. So we're going to use source name 
and then place each clip in separate folders. Make sure you have this check so that the clips won't overwrite each other because sometimes we have uh, same clips, that means same source clips, but in different cuts. So if we don't separate each clip by folders, they might overwrite each other and you will find that some clips will be missing when you are relinking it later on. And that's it. This is all the setting that you have to do. So once you're done with all these, you can go down to add to render queue and then it will pop up on your render queue on your right here and you can render all. So once it's rendered, let me show you what you can do. So now that all my clips are rendered individually, I'm going to export the XML with this timeline. So I'm going to go up to File, Export and Export Timeline and locate where you're going to save the timeline. I'm just going to save it here as TNTCO BYD and make sure that you're selecting FCP 7 XML, which has this .XML. So I'm going to click on this and save. Once I have my rendered exports and also the XML, I like to relink them back myself for two reasons. Number one is because I want to check that each clip is present in the export so we don't have to go back and forth during the online process if there's any missing clips. And the second thing is because sometimes the XML doesn't read the files properly. Like let's say your source footage is from a RAID camera, so it's an R3D file. So if you export the XML, with the R3D file tag, sometimes if you export in QuickTime, which is .mov, it doesn't read the file properly. So if I relink them back using MOV, then the online editor won't have any problems relinking back the MOV files with the MOV XML later on. I hope that's clear enough, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So in the edit page, I'm going to go up to my bins over here and create a new bin. I'm going to name this export. So in this bin, I'm going to drag in all my render clips by going into my export rushes and all these are the rendered. So I'm going to just drag it in and it's going to come in and there you go. So I'm going to close this first. Once I have these here, I'm going to import back the XML that I exported just now. So going into my file, import timeline, I'm going to select back the XML that I exported just now which is this one, TNT code BYD, and I'm going to import it. Here you can rename your timeline, but I'm not going to do that. So here, automatically set project settings, I'm just going to leave that on. But automatically import source file, I'm going to turn that off because I want to manually direct it to what footage to be used for this timeline. So I'm going to leave the others and select OK. And as for where to direct it, I'm going to turn off my masters and only use the clips from the export bin, which is over here. So if I select OK, then the clips will link nicely like this. So this is the exported clips and I can go into my light box to check whether all the clips are linking properly and nothing is missed out. Once that is done, I'm going to go up to file and export timeline and then select where I want the timeline to be export, which is over here in my exports folder. So I'm going to replace that. So if everything looks good, you can go into your finder. You will have your rushes, which is the footage that is exported, and also your XML to link back the footage. And you can either put this file in a hard drive or also upload it to maybe Frame.io. It's my choice because it has very fast upload speeds and also download speeds. So that's it. So I hope this video helps you to make sure that the process of exporting to the online editor is smooth. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I'll get to them as soon as I can. So that's it for this video. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.